Well, hey everyone, welcome to the homestead. You know, if you live out in the country um, and you actually have a tractor that has a front end loader and you've been trying to lift something up in the air and wish you just had a little bit more reach, well, I've got an idea for you. I'm going to show you the extension that I made for my tractor to be able to set posts and beams on construction that we've done around here on the homestead. And I need a little bit more reach. So just stay tuned and I'll show you what we did to fix our tractor to be able to solve that problem. This two inch steel tubing, we used this in order to make the boom for the tractor. When we built the cabin, I actually cut it off um, and then we started to cut these welds off but then we thought, well maybe we should leave them because they're not in the way that I can rig this thing back up on here to be able to extend the boom and to be able to lift stuff uh, especially for construction so we're going to repair this weld and then we're going to fix the little short tubes that I bought to show you all hillbilly engineering and how we're rigging up a boom for this quick connect front end
Okay, what I did was I, these two sleeves right here, I'm drilling the holes now so that I'll have a way to connect and disconnect this as I need to use it. So, got these two holes drilled now, I'm going to drill this one. Well, I certainly appreciate you letting me come up here and um, you welding that back for us and borrowing your drill to drill, tap and drill all those holes. He even let me have four high tensile steel bolts, but he said you're going to have to get your own nuts. Now, if I'm already a nut, I only need three more, right? You're kind of a useless nut. <laughs> <laughs> We, we just love to poke fun at each other, you know. Sometimes we don't even bother getting together. We just yell back and forth. <laughs> um, but no, this is going to really come in handy, especially when we start setting those poles for the satellite tower. And then, of course, when we get down there building the barn, we're going to have to be lifting material back up and all that. So I got to thinking that, you know, putting this thing back on was probably the best thing because when you're dealing with, heavy stuff like that it doesn't take but a little slip to get somebody hurt real bad so this will actually help out a whole lot but um, anyway uh, he's got some gardening that he's going to do and I'm gonna make my way back over there to the cabin and uh, I've got some more work over there to do so you got anything that you'd like to say to these folks about your good neighbor no. <laughs> easy now easy <laughs> The only thing I could say is you wouldn't want to put on YouTube it might get you to demonetize. <laughs> uh, I'll have to have him tell me later what it was, right? Anyway, all right, we're going to get a hit, go ahead and get back on over there. All right, appreciate buddy. it. Just in case you were wondering, um, I had run that two inch square tubing all the way into this quick connect head. It didn't interfere right here when it was lifting up, um, and it doesn't interfere with hooking your. Um, equipment on the end right here so that's the reason that we went ahead and welded that on i cut it off up here so that um, i don't actually have to carry this thing around all the time and it makes it really nice to have this extension on there especially um, when i'm doing construction work and the other thing too is there was actually three welds there was one on the side here one on the top and one on the very back back here that's actually holding this bottom on. But using this extension will allow me to take it off and put it back on whenever I need it. Now I was going to also show you, I've got two hooks mounted on my bucket right here. I use these straps when I'm logging. I just run this around and I hook one right here and I hook the other one here and I can actually lift that log and pretty much put it anywhere I need to. I can tilt it back and I can control it from flopping uh, and it rests against the bucket. We also welded two on the end of this so I can lift my post or my beam however basically do the same thing get this over here hook it on and I can lift it up.
these are three six by sixes. I had to take time out in the middle because I have a good friend that I worked in in EMS. He's an older man and I ran into him a couple weeks ago said that he was going to be building a porch and that he was going to have to get him some six by sixes and I just felt that you know at the cost or the price of lumber right now that I had so much so I volunteered to go ahead and cut those for him. I'm going to throw them in my truck and I will deliver them tomorrow. Hey everyone, we're on our way to deliver those six by sixes to Brian's house actually because the elderly gentleman that I was speaking of, he's going to pick them up there. We're also going to try to dig up some ramps, some more ramps that I can transplant if we can find any because the leaves have may have receded where we won't be able to locate them but if we can we're going to dig up some more clusters of that plus we're going to dig up some strawberries and take those back over there uh, and transplant those and the cane tops that i left over there we're going to try to pick up some of those so that i can use those to stake for my garden because they're pretty heavy duty because even the tops we're about three times the size of that river cane that I got. You know, back in the day when the early Americans were clearing property or uh, they were plowing with a horse and hand plow to try to um, make a garden and sow their fields and so forth, they would actually run into a lot of rocks and they would pick those up out of the field and they would stack them um, in a row. A lot of times to set property lines and or build a fence, a natural fence, out of the rocks. And so this area that we're going to has a lot of that. So I thought that I would show that to you here. Y'all just stay tuned and I'll meet you when we get over there. Okay guys, this is the famous strawberry. Um, what do you, it's not a hatchery, but it's a strawberry what? What, what do you call it? I'm gonna say it's a strawberry bed. <laughs> it's a strawberry bed. So we're gonna dig us up some more of these so that we can transplant them. Try not to take your dirt. I have had it. <laughs> I've got dirt for days. <laughs> You have to be real bad to them to kill them. See that clump right there? You can break it in half. Right yeah, there. I'm going to. All right, guys, we got us another box full of strawberries right here that we're going to transplant. Thank you so much for that. No worries. And 
we actually looked for the ramps, but they've already went dormant. So we're going to have to wait until next uh, April, uh, late March, early April, or late March, April, and early, early May. Now this is what, the middle of May? Yeah. They're already gone. So we're going to have to wait to be able to identify them until next year. But um, I told him I would come back and get some more cane, kind of help him clean up because I can always use it for, you know, staking um, the vegetables and also when I do some landscaping, you know, planting some small trees and, and whatnot, be able to use them there. But um, these strawberries, they're going to make for some good eating. And like I was saying, mix those with the um, blackberries that I get and put you some uh, shortbread in there. And man, you could just make a meal out of oh, that, yeah. you know? <laughs> anyway, guys, we're going to... Um, Get this packed up and I will see you back at the outpost. We're giving each one of these a pretty healthy drink of water because it's right at noon now, which I probably should have waited, but you really want to get these transplanted as soon as possible. So that's the reason that I'm giving them a pretty healthy drink here. Well, I think that you guys seen in one of the recent videos, um, I started working on a rake handle, and here it is. So I thought what I would do is go ahead and treat these with some of that timber frame oil. It will help 
the dogwood lasts even though it is a hardwood and this handle right here I'd found this unique because just the way that I hold it um, it's almost like a small putter with that nice curve on the end of the handle right there so I really like that on my blade anyway we'll go ahead and treat these with some of that oil and it's supposed to rain so I won't be using these uh, anytime soon in the next day or so so give this thing a chance or give this oil a chance to uh, soak into the wood real good but yeah this I'll tell you what the, I really like this timber frame oil I've used it on all of that cabin on the outside and on the inside it does a great great job <clears throat> I'm probably going to get some comments on why didn't I burn this too since I burned everything else. But, you know, I keep these put up so I didn't really see any reason to do that. But I do want to uh, put this oil on there just to help protect the wood. Well, we certainly hope that you guys enjoyed that video of us getting the tractor boom repaired and ready to go to be able to set the poles for the new satellite tower for the Starlink. And I've also got these poles right here that I'm going to have to get ready to set the base for the um, water tank up there at the outdoor kitchen, not only so that I can have running water up there, but also so that I can irrigate the raised beds behind the cabin. Guys, we really appreciate you stopping by and hanging out with us up here at the homestead. My son, my daughter, and I, we can't thank you enough. We hope that each and every one of you have a great day. You all take care, and we look forward to seeing you back up here at the cabin again next time.